next speaker is Tadashi uh, Nomura. He's uh, titled Wonderful Operations at Thanks, Thanks so much. Uh, right, so, uh, anyway, that's the title. That's the right one. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, what is it? It's a 20 minute talk, you know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta go. <laughs> 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 so, um, there we go. So, we, uh, I, just from the outset, I was just inclined to enjoy it. I'd like to remember to have the time, but I smoothed a uh, smooth complex by the team. I have a close up of the DLM on me, acting on it, and then actually it's probably, I think, a bunch of other things. And in general, uh, you know, I'm going to assume that the, the groups and moves that show up will be able to be too coefficient, but that's just because I'm lazy for the most part. I'll uh, indicate when that's essential to take a lot. So um, the main thing I want to talk about is the following. If, if you start with uh, for the asymptotic theory of X, um, uh, you have some ring, right? And you also have a corresponding uh, shadow theory or theory, right? And you have ring there as well. And um, then there's a chain path theory now from one to the other, which indeed deserves the most cases. So that's one of them. So what I want to talk about are sort of more exact versions of this and more. So so these are suffering inside something else. Right? So um, these are both suffering inside some um, more exotic kind of commodities. So um, this is space called IX, which is uh, the inertia variety of that. I'll explain what this means later. Um, has a activity. And um, of course, you know, this thing is also an integrant. Here, it's a product, but I'm going to put an exotic product on the set of the and this is a very child with them all. It's a child with them all. Um, and um, then, um, and so these exotic products are really used in the natural that you would be 10 and 1. Um, basically, the big is a construction in homology. For example, it's very visually, they did um, basically in, in child, but it's really the same idea. Uh, and other one uh, describes uh, uh, the same thing in case but again, same idea, really. And then uh, with, uh, with uh, Joseph Hoffman, we, we formulated this definition in an alternate way, which um, doesn't involve any complex curves that will be essential in the follow. So I'm going to use this alternate description, but it's fully different. Okay, so, so in this theory, uh, there's, a, there's a community bridge structure here, and there's a community bridge structure here, and there's a it's an exotic ring homology that preserves this exotic product structure in such a way that these include the subrings in this exotic. <coughs> so, um, so, so, I should just say that. So, the, I suppose the, uh, what we did here, uh, I should also mention this work. Uh, so, so, the stuff I'll talk about today is work in progress with uh, Ed and Jarvis. Um, and in fact, we did an earlier paper we, where we talked about. Um, this, uh, this case is some detail as well. Um, so I should also mention some physics as well, because of course the theory of the physics where this is really some sort of unquestioned sector inside uh, the whole theory going into this way. And um, you know, this is the the work of Rahman and Nato is going to be most relevant to uh, this particular theory that I'm describing. And then talk about All right. So the, the, the question I would like to ask is, well, you know, is, well, you know, K theory has additional structures on it. Right? It has, a, has this weird application on. So, so ordinary K theory has, uh, you know, it has a product on it. It also has a structure of something called a lambda ring or a psi ring, which I'll explain. And it has turn classes and turn characters and so on. And these things are suitably compatible. Um, so the question I'd like to ask, uh, try to pose and answer to some extent is um, when can you generalize these things to more exotic in such a way that when you restrict the sort of down twisted sex, you recover all the concepts across all the So let me just recall what I mean by this stuff. So, uh, so what is that kind of case there, right? I mean, we're really talking about a, a ring from the outset, right? We're talking about a uh, resulting group of complex vector bundles uh, with a geometric ring. And um, so that's a ring, right, with a uh, multiplication, right? So that's more than some of the vector bundles, and multiplying them might be the essential bundle. And that's our community of the 
that ring structure is basically the following. So you have a map now. Right. <coughs> uh, so for any element in uh, uh, K theory, you now associate a power series in D uh, with coefficients in that expression theory. So uh, in the following way, parameter T is small parameter. And so, so what is the right thing to think of the um, It's a specific power series. I have land of power of the most inclined possessive bundle is just the I have zero power. So, uh, in particular, if uh, you know, see the class of vector bundle here, it's a polynomial rank, which would be the rank of But more generally, the knowledge means there will be different things. So, if I'm working with two tokens, there will be linear combinations of vector bundles with some coefficients. And so, I just want to extend it to the multiplicity. So, if I have a sum, the sum becomes a product, and then these coefficients will be. The power series in P, for example, if it's minus one or a half or something, so you send one plus polynomial of one plus power series in P, which is a fractional or inverse power. So we use that all the time. Okay. So, so there we go. So that's, this is called land destruction. So why do I care about this thing? Well, you know, there are various reasons I might care about this. But um, the one, one really easy thing to explain is the fact that you know, if you talk about the key theory of order times the vector value, you think that there's no vector value where you plug in P equals minus one. And this, uh, this thing that is order class. So you're doing order class is <coughs> um, Notice that the sum here is finite, right? Because this is a vector bundle. That's why they think the order class is some This formal difference of the element here really makes sense. So, okay. So, um, okay. 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 So let me just formalize that structure, right? So the, the structure here uh, is called the lander. So what that thing, this, of course, this k group here, I can keep it on the bottom. This is something called a lambda ring. And a lambda ring is just, well, that means that that lambda operation that I defined earlier satisfies a large property, right? So I can use your ring, uh, and then these operations satisfy the property. Okay, and um, so this is the most important one, right? Because I'm not um, And this is why it's basically so for the structure sheet. These polynomials here are some universal polynomials um, that exist. Um, uh, if you want to derive what, I don't remember exactly what they are, but they need to derive if you sort of remember the splitting principle, you can actually derive what this is. Okay, so anyway, we're just talking about the lambda ring and uh, the k group with, uh, with the special. Okay, so that's an important part of the data. And so uh, part of the things that I'd like to understand is, is if I can extend that lambda ring structure somehow to the this is more exotic uh, order form data. Okay, so the so in order to do that, um, I have to actually do some auxiliary thing called the Psi ring. Okay, so, so the lambda ring is, uh, the lambda ring operation is very closely related to something called the Psi ring operation. And so what, what do we subtract? Okay, so you have now that same ring, you have a few associate ring with this. And you now have a collection of operators indexed by n, where n is equal to 1, we call them Psi. And they satisfy the properties. Right? So the first Psi is identity. These psi ends are each ring homomorphism, which is the location. And it has a property that if I can close the psi n and psi n, the psi is a finite thing. And so, um, and so this is what we call psi ring. So, so why do I bring in this sort of third party? Well, uh, it's actually the psi ring that I sort of sense what it will do. And the relationship between the psi ring and the lambda ring is normally the following. So let's so, um, so if you have this commuter ring, and it, let's take this formula here. Right? So, so put A is an element of that ring, and this is a formal power series in P, and this is a formal power series in P, where exponential is equal power series for exponential. And we can compare term by term in P, and you get the relations between the psi and the lambda right? So if you start with the psi ring, uh, so if you start with the lambda ring, and you can find the psi through this formula, uh, then you'll get a psi ring. Uh, on the other hand, if you uh, start, start with a psi ring, and then you define a lambda this way, you'll get a lambda ring provided that you're over q. So this one fits with q. Okay. So, so the point is that the uh, iterative right here is in fact a psi ring. And that psi ring operation is by the line bundle of the and how the splitting principle gets the uh, so there, you know, at least that's a cue there. These are so All right, so let me, let 
explain that for the whole feature. So, so what is the whole feature? So, so uh, in all these stories, R has to be communicative, right? Yeah. It will will the uh, case theory of the yeah. the space be mm -hmm. communicative? Sure. Um, so, so, so uh, what about the case when the vector bundle is uh, not aligned? Right, it's pretty simple. But you can also define it through that formula. So this just corresponds to uh, taking tenders with itself? Uh, yes, that's what it is. I'm trying to take all that out of the question. Okay, so if I have this space S, I define this uh, new space called the IX, called the initial of X. It's just a pair of root bounds and points, and that's this space. Okay. So G acts on that pair diagonally, where G acts on this vector by conjugation by two branches. The initial variety of x. The yeah. initial variety of x contains, uh, it breaks up naturally into pieces indexed by conjugate classes. So those graphs and to belong to conjugate classes. So uh, I can write it like this. So g bar is set of conjugate classes. Yeah. Um, and then associated with the conjugate class, you have uh, what we call i to phi of x for every conjugate class. Right? So the set of all these things where this thing belongs to that conjugate class. So those are all two spaces. And in particular, I'll just call x to the n to be the set of all pairs in the inertia here, such that the root on the left side is n. Okay. Uh, so it kind of really implies that basically that the sum here is finite, and the order of the conjugate class is finite. Okay. I'm sure that we'll need that officially as well. Okay. All right, so, uh, so now we have to define the case there. Okay. Okay. So there we go. So, um, so why is this? Well, it's really the g equivariant. If you look at the last line here, sorry, right, I'm really looking at the g equivariant case there to the thing. But the g equivariant case there you can equivalently write uh, in this way, where g is the uh, center line, the set of uh, subgroup of elements in the area of the And so we're really talking about this thing as a added. Right? So we don't need the product that comes on the three. And you can do the same thing in cohomology and, and chow as well. And so now we're going to define the product, and I'm using a description that is due to uh, the exhibit that we did with the carbon <coughs> and also with the uh, editor. So what we do is we, we define this new series object S in the case of the case of the inertia in the following way. So we consider the project tau, which is a tangent bundle on X, we subtract the V algebra to the And so then, um, so now we consider S in the following way. We take the tangent bundle here and restrict it to uh, the inertia. Where the left back to the end. And uh, so you can think about this as a set of points inside X, the point the point one is fixed by N. Uh, so then you can break up the tangent bundle into eigenbundles of that action, index by K, which K goes from zero to the order of N. And then you weight, you take the sum, but now you weight it by the log of that eigenbundle. And the significance of this is some sense of the gauge for the rank of this thing. Some sort of case there gauge. The gauge is something you've seen before. This is not struggle, not going Okay, so in order to define the multiplication, we need to do something called a double inertia. Um, but just I'll just sort of for each of the time, uh, cut down here. Um, there's a, something called a n-vector, it's really the pair of one and two super elements. And so the double inertia, therefore, is a triple. Super elements in x, such that n1 fixes x and n two fixes x together. Okay, so, so now the multiplication can be defined as follows. <coughs> If I take two elements and take their here, I can pull the back here, right, because uh, it's going to stay here, and then I can push forward via multiplication. So, um, and then, but, so I pull back, I multiply them, and then I can cut with some Euler class of some object. And this object here is constructed from those vectors. So the miracle is somehow this thing here is in fact represented by a vector bundle, something that's not obvious here, but in fact it's in such a multiple. Okay, so this makes sense. So then you use the same as it one divided by that and that's all the gap, right? It's equivalent, of course, yeah. But the formulas, the formulas are, yeah, of course, they're equal to the case that are two different classes. But the point is, you know, I guess, um, is, is that that formula is relatively crucial because we'll need that S in our formula. So, of course, uh, this is not negative. Uh, so indeed, right? so therefore this is going to be a commuter ring, the child of homologies is a commuter ring, uh, 
uh, these things agree with uh, the, the, the sort of what we call shadowing, the what we call chronologies, the chain one and so on defined. Uh, and indeed, there's a string character, which is the most interesting part at the very end. The string character map here is a bad complication, there's a correction by the top class of that after it showed up. So the formula that we wrote down that we use for the structure model is trying to carry the S, and that S is crucial in uh, making sure that the product is not a product of the Okay. So um, I should say that, uh, so let me just explain what a siren is, how to fix up the siren. So something called a box siren. So for every unit here J, uh, if I take a line bundle like L and I find a box siren, I can define it because it's some of those kinds of things. And for every K, you're going to equal 1. And then I can use the quoting principle and extend this thing to a multiplicity of siren to uh, get a directed bundle. And so we just consider this formula. It's an ordinary style equation, and then we multiply by the correction from the uh, okay. So now, uh, that explains that this is a siren, uh, this is a siren operation on the uh, on the multiple um, case area, or at least the part of multiple case area, so there's a twiddle here, on which this box time makes sense. Okay, so um, I don't have much time, but um, so there are some cases where, in fact, you can find on the entire case area. Uh, and because the box time only comes from the entire case area, sometimes it will only be defined on sub rings of uh, case area. Uh, it's also always defined on certain local ratios, or the ratio of the representation of the which um, I won't go into too much now. Um, but, uh, so, how could this thing fail to make sense? Well, remember, if, if it was like half a line bundle, imagine we could say that you had half a line bundle, that would be like say that you had L to the one half. You could try to extend it out a bit and make it appear. So it can fail to make sense if the S here is not represented by that. Why do you know Okay, so the, that's the thing, is that there's this, this thing, so I'm just having some ring. I have time to explain the side ring now. So the side ring, a slush on, on, on the side ring will take the area, or on certain other ring, and therefore a uh, lambda ring structure is what we see. Um, there are also what we call Turing classes. So we talked about the orbital Turing character. You can also just find some notion of orbital Turing classes. So there's a Turing character for the Turing classes, right? And uh, these sides and lambdas, they, they satisfy some compatibility relations. This is all we call the generalized visual one. Um, and um, there's also a notion of dualization here in the sense that they rule the vector bundle. And the whole notion of that, which is the correct notion of taking the dual. They have also like that. Um, and finally, uh, you know, these are the all the overfold products one can write down. See what the formula that we wrote down is the S's. You can replace the S's by some other S's. It's still the associated products. As in, for example, uh, the first overfold homology, uh, the equation of the and uh, the first of the by the other one that we have in the So, um, all these statements will also work there if you use their S's. And, so, and the merit of this theory here is that the S's in that case are always vector products. So you've got to do this for coordinating multiple formulas of the coordinating. Correct. Well, so if you do the case of version here, right? Yeah, that's true, just wait for the coordinating. Well, if you think about that, because right, well, we can talk about it later. There, uh -huh. There's some subtleties. Yeah, I know what you mean. But that has some merits, because the S is there to manifest the uh, object, and then the operation is defined. <coughs> okay, so that's the oh, one whole minute, right? Wow. How did that happen? Okay. Yeah. So, so um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, maybe I can adjust this a little bit. Right? So, um, if you think in terms of um, a vector vector vector, it's, it's, I think in vector vector vector, it's not quite. If you keep in front of the feedback, I'm not sure that it's exactly the same as the uh, cosine. Yeah. There's a little bit of a problem. Um, so, so just to explain what those guys do, uh, there's, some, there's some kind of normal bundle right, of uh, the six point of X by these elements N inside X. And if I just define the S's in my little formula, so basically you get normal bundle. Instead of what I, my really definition, you get a new product, a different product. And in fact, if you write down hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of whole products, you can't get something, you name anything because the second one, you write that whole three. Um, and so any one of those guys, these instructions will, will work. It's very robust for that. And it follows from that from the discussion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Quick question? Uh, so you have these, do um, you have generalizations of possible mm -hmm. variants such as separated variants or anything like this in terms of these what's called uh, check characters? What is the specific variant? The integral of uh, the same character of uh, the peak of zero power of the potential bundle. Yeah, I mean, you can talk about this thing. But, but 
prime numbers, which is more generally. Right, right, right. But, but there's one thing I haven't answered yet, which is what is the vector function? And you have a lambda ring, right? So, so how do you tell if you have some random k theory class? And you want to know whether or not that k theory class is a vector function. One test is you see if it's lambda polynomial, lambda series is polynomial. Right? Mm -hmm. Then then there's a chance that it's a vector function. Right? Here, uh, what's the open formal notion of vector function? It's not so immediately clear. But I could certainly talk about elements here whose lambda series are polynomial. And then I could talk about this kind of a lot of this kind of thing. More generally, like the open theory. Okay, I have some examples where it does that. I'll tell you later. Um, <coughs> so in the algebraic context, um, the general character map for the usual space is nowhere near its rejective what you call molecule. Um, do you have any version of this that would, I mean, the, so uh, algebraic K theory only maps into the, a very small part of the, of the cohomology, but Hoxha's cohomology, which is the slightly different version. Hochschild's homology, which is a slightly screwed version of K theory, does map surjectively onto. Ah. Yeah. I mean, I've been hoping for 15 years to find uh, a product formula for Hochschild's homology of an order form. Yeah, I've kind of wanted that something like that for a long time. I think you're saying. So, surjective, but is it isomorphic? Yes, it's an isomorphic. So, if you, need, if you pull back, then I think you can, in theory, have. Yeah, and you have operations like push forward and pull back and things like that. So. And there's an actual map from the structure of the yeah. challenge. Right, so then you have to have a problem. I mean, it's really interesting to that. Yeah, the only question is what is the. Pro I mean, there is a naturally defined product on function homology, yeah. and it's not clear. Does it have this kind of twist perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it should be very similar. Yeah. We should do that. Oh, okay. okay, so.